if you experience that, just enjoy it. Just enjoy it because it doesn't always last. I've spoken to people who I know personally who have had Kundalini awakenings and they have said the same thing doesn't always last and it didn't it didn't last for me it hasn't lasted for me I, I yeah I can't remember the last time I had a moment of that hello my lovers and welcome back to another episode all about kundalini awakenings if you are new to my channel welcome I'm Lauren I have been through a spontaneous kundalini awakening I talk about my full experience on my channel I have a whole playlist related to kundalini awakenings that is forever growing and I'm continuing to add to it and I also share it on my podcast as well so please go check that out if you are interested and welcome 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 to all my people that are OGs that uh, have been here before welcome back it is wonderful to have you here I'm gonna free flow this episode uh, this I'm gonna free flow blah, I'm gonna free flow this episode sorry I did this because I've said that like three times the episode is part of a kundalini series that I have created on my channel so please don't forget to check that full playlist out today we're going to be talking about physical and mental side effects of kundalini awakening it happened a year and a half ago so these are all the side effects that have happened to me within the year and a half most of them started straight away some of them have still been going on in my life some of them have dropped off completely but these are all the things that I noticed about myself the physical and the mental differences that I noticed within myself after the Kundalini awakening. I just want to say that this is all based on my own personal experience so whatever I talk about here if it resonates and great if it doesn't then just leave that behind. I'm sharing all of this because I hope that it helps support other people through their experience but my channel isn't just related to Kundalini awakening. I do touch on like just spirituality as a whole. My channel isn't necessarily just about all of that. I do share vlogs and just like lifestyle day-to-day content as well. I'm at a point in my life where my kundalini episodes are going to be forever evolving because this is now a journey that i'm on and will continue to be on and i'm keeping it open end so there's no number on these episodes because they will be coming as and when and i have so many ideas and so many things that i want to talk about so one of the things that i noticed mentally for me was heightened awareness my awareness to the things around me my awareness to my surroundings my awareness to the people around me my awareness to myself big one to myself really heightened skyrocketed like peaked like I was so much more aware of everything it was like the veil had been lifted the fog had cleared the rose tinted glasses had come off and I was looking at the truth in everything just so much awareness specifically towards myself I was seeing so many things about myself that were bad habits old patterns at the end of the day when you go through a kundalini awakening the kundalini is all related to the snake right so the snake sheds its skin over and over and over again in its life so every time you shed your old skin it's like you're reborn again so that is basically what happens when you go through a kundalini awakening the snake goes up the skin comes away and you are reborn and you have to learn and unlearn and relearn loads of different things the heightened awareness like that was a big one and it covers a lot of different areas but I'll touch on that as we go down so I remember when I first had the awakening I started looking at life so differently it was as if the moment it happened it was like a switch went off in my head and it was just like this is how I view life now I can't imagine viewing life that way anymore I view it this way and it's so hard to explain because I can't put a pin on exactly the difference I guess it was the fact the veil had lifted and I was so much more aware of myself and the surroundings I guess that is kind of part of it but I just felt different I felt like I was like I can't look at life the same again like this experience has really opened me up and really expanded everything really opened my mind even more than it already was it's just like whoa (laughs) okay I was a lot more present so I think that seeing life in a more grounded way was definitely that feeling of like okay I'm not gonna be looking at life the same anymore you know you go through phases but that was a big thing was just one of those sentences that I noticed that I was saying a lot was that I'm not gonna look at life the same again like this is it this is how it's going to be from now on. And I'm just like, wow, like what my head, the next one, my confidence peaked to be honest, like this, like I think my confidence peaked in a sense. And it was like more so at the beginning of this awakening, I felt a lot more happier with myself. I felt a lot more confident with who I was as a person. So my confidence peaked in that way. It was like a lot more clear that I needed to show up more as myself, as my most authentic self, even though I was already doing that. There were still some things that were still 
I needed to shift and obviously you know we can't just say I'm going to start showing up as myself and then like completely show up as yourself you kind of like work through different things at different times don't you and the confidence within myself just peaked and it wasn't just based on me knowing that I needed to show up and I was confident to show up as my true self now it was like how I looked I felt a lot better about how I looked even though I looked the same in that moment I just felt a lot more like oh okay I am happy with how I look and I am happy with my body rather than judging myself for all these different things rather than being like oh but I could change that and I could change this it was more so just like I'm really happy with this vessel that I've been given what a blessing so that was really nice the next thing was change of body structure and the loss of weight my experience was I lost weight after my kundalini awakening I noticed that drastically I lost weight it was really weird it it wasn't like I lost weight in an unhealthy way it was just like drastically I noticed that I had lost a lot of weight for the longest time I felt like I was trying to do the most eating healthier going to the gym I just didn't feel like much was happening nothing was really changing and then I moved to Glastonbury I had this kundalini awakening and then suddenly I'm how I should be but I know some people do go through the same thing some people their face changes some people lose weight some people gain weight so it's different for everyone sorry I realize I'm throwing this around and it's a mic and I need to keep it very still near my face I just can't help but talk with my hands this is a weird one and I don't necessarily always like talking about it because it just feels really egotistical it was just something I noticed and I know I'm not the only one that has experienced this because other people that I know personally and other people that I've spoke to online about their kundalini awakenings have said the same thing and that is that people stare at you differently this was immediate the next day I was in Tesco's and I was walking around and it literally felt like everyone in there was looking at me it was really fucking weird actually even at times I was like are people following me but I'm not saying that people were looking at me in a way like oh look at her I don't know whether it's an energetic thing someone's energy is shining in a different way I don't know I'm not used to being stared at like that so I I think that's why I noticed it so much when I've spoken to other people about it they've said the same thing like they've noticed that people stare how like moths are to a flame you know when you see a beautiful woman you see a beautiful man people will stare right it wasn't in in that sense it was more so like a, an energetic type of thing the only way I could explain it was as if like it wasn't them I, I it's really hard to explain but it was like they weren't aware of them staring like that but I could see it it happened so much more the first few months it still happens now but I just think that certain people show up energetically in a in a different way because I find myself sometimes looking at people and especially people that have had kundalini awakening they just bring a different sort of energy into the spaces and they bring a certain light that is quite enduring so people will look and yeah so that's just a a really odd one but it's something that I've noticed has been consistent across the people that I know with their experiences and whatnot the next one my sensitivity levels peaked Oh, honestly, this is still an ongoing process. Sensitivity levels are just next level. And this isn't just for like food. This is like energetically being around certain situations, being in certain environments, being around certain people, smoking cannabis or just having an edible. The sensitivity levels to that is just so much more intense than it was. And I talked about this in my first ever episode, actually talking about my full Kundalini awakening experience. I talk about my sensitivity level to cannabis specifically. If you're interested in that definitely go and check that video out because I talk about it more in depth there but my sensitivity levels to others energy was really obvious my sensitivity to my surroundings I was finding it harder being around certain people and in certain spaces based on the energy that I was feeling and it was just so much more intense that I could not feel it if I was in a space of someone that was moving through something really heavy like I could literally feel everything I could feel the pain I could feel the hurt I could feel what they were feeling it's painful and it's also really saddening the sensitivity level I think that's been an ongoing thing and I'm not sure that's ever going to change I've always been a sensitive person anyway so I want to make sure I make that note I've always been quite a sensitive person but like this just amplified my sensitivity level at maximum level and (laughs) it makes me really want to shout maximum level please but that's just um I watch a guy called Casper Sight on uh, YouTube. He actually does like scary ghost videos and UFO videos and stuff. He's great. So I plugged him there because I just straight away I thought that. (laughs) Just being like on a train in London, for example, I'm like overwhelmed. You have to really learn how to protect your energy and your space. Not in a sense of I don't want to be around you. It's more so like I can feel you and I'm also feeling myself. So it's like double that. So you're just feeling so much and so much is moving through your body. You just have to learn to protect your space, protect your aura 
mantra and protect your energy so that you can you know be grounded and show up for the person that you're with or show up for the people around you because it can get really overwhelming when you're feeling that sensitive I've had many a moments where I have felt overwhelmed with my surroundings and overwhelmed by being around certain people and I've just had to take myself away I've had to remove myself from the situation so the next thing is presence and bliss states this has more so been at the beginning of my experience after having my kundalini awakening I wouldn't say that this happens so much now and it's quite rare that it does I am a bit of a busybody in my mind I think I'm just a busy person anyway so like my mind is almost always busy I do have obviously moments of pure presence and bliss I think just because I'm a busy person and I have a I have a busy lifestyle and I sometimes I don't even know what I do that's so busy I'm just gonna have to change positions because I'm feeling a little bit (laughs) I'm just gonna put my no I can't get comfortable. Having moments of presence and bliss has been a big thing for me at the beginning. And I actually remember this one time. And again, I've talked about this in my full Kundalini Awakening experience. Please go check it out if you are interested because it is like so detailed and so like deep. There was a moment where I was up at tour in Glastonbury and I was by myself and I had this like realization that I didn't have any thoughts. It's weird because I'm saying I realize, so you'd think that I would think that, but it was just this moment of awareness awareness but I was like it's quiet in my head it was just completely quiet it was like nothing was there and I was like (gasps) what am I without my thoughts what am I without my thoughts and it made me realize how much the noise in our mind causes so much noise and we're so used to it that when you don't hear that and it's like a really elongated time of presence and like no mind chatter it's actually quite overwhelming I was overwhelmed I was a little bit like (gasps) I don't know how to what do I do with myself started feeling a bit anxious in the moment but then I suddenly realized I just need to enjoy this bliss state I need to enjoy this presence and a lot of people I've noticed on their videos on YouTube they talked about bliss states and moments of deep presence if you experience that just enjoy it just enjoy it because it doesn't always last I've spoken to people who I know personally who have had kundalini awakenings and they have said the same thing doesn't always last and it didn't it didn't last for me it hasn't lasted for me I I, yeah I can't remember the last time I had a moment of that it's different to like meditation for example meditation you're choosing to sit and choosing to go into presence and choosing to go into clearing your mind but this was like it just happened out of the blue and you're like silent it's uh it's silent so it's it it's just enjoy it just enjoy those moments don't worry about it don't stress it's fucking lovely actually the next one was moments of deep realizations about life so this kind of goes down to like I would have moments where I would just suddenly realize something so deep about myself and my life but it would just hit me all of a sudden it was as if something was in my head and it was just showing me this is what's happened this is how you fix it this is how you've been and this is how you can be moving forward done it was like a slideshow of just this is a problem this is what you can do to fix it it would happen so quickly sometimes my thoughts would race so quickly into that deep realization and then recognizing what's happened and realizing how I acted and then recognizing how I can be moving forward to like show up in the best way possible it was as if like my brain was finding a solution and fixing it within the space of like less than five minutes if you were to see me from your perspective I'd be sat there and I'm just like zoning out this thing is happening in my head and I'm like my god (laughs) so it's really fucking amazing actually um when i think about it it happened to me so many different times i remember having this deep moment of realization about myself when i was in bed at night right before i was going to sleep i realized i didn't trust myself putting all my trust in the universe in the people around me you know spirit in my guides my fucking all of that shit and um you're not shit guys and angels by the way i love you all um (laughs) spirit guides all my ancestors and all that kind of stuff but I realized I was like oh my god I'm placing all my trust in everything outside of myself but I don't trust myself I need to learn to trust myself but I was seeing all of it like and I was like oh my god fucking hell of course so many moments like that so many so many moments like that and that was more so at the beginning again I can't say that I have these really quick realizations now but back then it was like super fucking quick the next one was bad back aches and body aches so this one oh 
oh my gosh so it's more so obvious at the very beginning i noticed that i got really 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 bad backache in my lower back but i know that this is a thing that can happen when you have a kundalini awakening is you can get really bad aches and body pains but what i've learned is that usually it's where the energy is stored so there's a lot of like dense energy stored in those areas of the body so you think about it in the chakra sense so like it was in my lower chakra so in my lower back so i would say that was in my root chakra i had a lot of work that needed to be shifted there so the pain that happened i needed to find a way to shift that pain so i remember one evening having a little smoke and just dancing and doing tribal fusion so i was moving my hips like a snake and like moving my arms and just like moving my body like really flowy and the next day i didn't have any pain but i had pain in that lower back for like weeks afterwards and it was so painful causing me to like struggle to pick things up and things like that so it was actually really really hurting my back and then certain people have different pains in different areas and i definitely have had lots of different random body aches and pains ever since this awakening but just imagine there's certain energy that's stored there that needs to be shifted that needs to be healed and usually when the energy moves it can move up your body so it could move from your root up to your sacral up to your power center your solar plexus up to your heart space and so on and so forth so if you're feeling a lot of density within those areas then find the chakra that is based in or like the area where that's based in and then figure out what you can do for yourself to potentially shift that energy but yeah you do find that you get aches and pains after the kundalini awakening because you think about it you've had this huge energetic awakening that's like burst and blasted through your body your nervous system is going to be shaken up your body and your nervous system and your energy is going to need to kind of find that realignment again so it's like you've been shaken and you need to just shift yourself back in and reconnect again it's just finding that realignment again so i see it like that your nervous system has been shaken up you just need to be just slotted back into place again so just find ways to kind of keep your body healthy stretch go for walks you know don't push yourself beyond your limits make sure you're moving your body because i find that if you don't move your body daily you definitely stiffen up anyway so the next one chronic fatigue i felt chronically tired after i had my kundalini awakening this lasted a really long time. I found that I was sleeping so much more. I was so tired all the time. And don't get me wrong, I definitely do feel like that sometimes. But I'm much better than I was when it first happened. I found that like when it first happened, I was realizing a lot about myself, about my life. I was having to like readjust these changes. So there was just a lot happening energetically, a lot happening mentally. So of course, I was going to be really tired. My physical body was hurting in areas and the veil's been lifted from your sight and there's just certain ways that you view things now and that's a big change you know again you're a snake shedding your old skin you're being reborn that's a lot that's a big deal you know it's a lot that's happening so of course you're going to be tired so please if you're feeling tired just let yourself rest don't even put a time limit on it just let yourself rest until you feel rejuvenated because you know it's important that you take care of yourself it's important that you look after yourself the next one is the lack of consideration i was going to say lack of concentration wow i shouted that didn't i sorry i definitely found that i was going into daydreaming a lot more because i was having these realizations and i was just like zoning out and going into this like realization about life my concentration towards my nine to five matrix job got so much worse still is bad i can't say that my concentration is any good the only time i can get hyper fixated on doing a task is when i'm either cleaning or when i'm editing a video any other time good luck (laughs) good luck obviously i can concentrate when other people are talking to me and things like that when i'm talking about tasks like work oh my gosh my nine to five job it's just not that enjoyable so you know it's not something that i enjoy doing i don't get up every day for work and think yay you can't wait to do this i only do that when i'm editing videos i love doing that but nine to five matrix job yeah (laughs) so lack of concentration definitely was a big thing for me i was like oh my god there'll be moments where it just felt like it was a bit all over the shop and um when i'm at work i'm just zoning out and thinking about all these other things and then not actually doing any work so concentration was a big one for me but i think that's like an ongoing thing as well i think it's more so that i've become more aware of it within myself i think some of these things as well as the hyper awareness that maybe i didn't realize before you've had this awakening and your consciousness is so much more clear that you're like recognizing so much more because the bell's lifted right so it's all linking back 
to itself, to each other. My next one is understanding my triggers, which I think I've already touched on anyway, based on just being hyper aware, really understanding my triggers a lot more clearly rather than going on all these different tangents within it. Just like recognizing that I'm triggered by this and then seeing how I can respond going forward. If it means me setting a boundary, then set a boundary. If it means me just saying I'm triggered by this, this has actually really upset me, then just that's fine. But recognizing where I'm being triggered and how I want to respond in that moment, I find that sometimes when you are triggered by things and you recognize what you're triggered by, you can actually heal it a lot better because you're a lot more aware and conscious of like what's triggering you. And then you might even realize it's not actually even the person that's triggering you. It's actually something that most of the time it's something within yourself and what you've experienced in the past. Sometimes it can actually be someone that's actually not being very kind. Just being more aware of it is very healing and um, it's also very overwhelming. But you know, it's important because you get to heal these things because you're realizing of these things about yourself. It's, it, it's better for you, I personally think. And the next one is a realization, huh? Realizations. Oh yeah, realizations of trusting myself. I've already talked about that. So I mentioned that already. So yeah, that was a big one. And I kind of touched on this as well already, which is the flashes of years of my life. So it... <sighs> Well, actually, no, I haven't really touched by this. But I remember, again, another time, this was quite early on again. I haven't had this experience since. This is something that was like an early symptom, but it's completely gone now. I can't remember the last time this happened. The last time I feel like I remember this happening to me was when I was actually living in Glastonbury. So I would have flashes of images of my life, but it's kind of related to like my triggers and having realizations about myself and the hyper awareness. I would have moments where I'd literally be laying in bed, like I mentioned about the trusting myself thing, where it would be like this and then show me that and then show me this and then I'm like recognizing how I can heal it and fix it within like minutes this was going way back into my like really young years and I was having flashes and flashes of images of my life you know like one of those cameras where you press the button and it flicks to the next picture and it flicks to the next picture it was like that but it was like bare fucking photos bare pictures you've been through this and you've been through that and you've been through this and you've been through that and it was just bam 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 I was downloading so much information because this portal had opened up in my mind. And I honestly cannot tell you half of it because it happened so quickly. I find that when you receive these kind of downloads so quickly, it's really hard to remember it. I've had experiences like that actually in plant medicine ceremonies. And I almost have to tell the medicine, can you slow down? Because I can't, I can't remember all of this. I can't take this all in. But that was happening to me a fair bit at the beginning, mostly when I was like laying down to go to sleep because I think where are my eyes shut, my body's rested. It's just like, bam, here's loads of information about your life that you didn't fucking realize before. I was just like, oh my God, this is so intense. The next one is the ability to see the truth in people. So this is a big one that I've touched on quite a few times within my videos. And it's something that I have definitely spoken about a lot. But the veil being lifted, you see where people are not showing up as their most authentic selves so much easier. You see where people are not being true to them, not being true to others. You can see where people are being quite manipulative. You can see where people are hiding themselves. For me, I've almost found it quite overwhelming and quite hard to see that stuff because obviously I'm seeing it in people that I really love and care a lot about and it's almost really upsetting to see you know what people are hiding and it's upsetting to to see that people are afraid to show up in certain ways and it's also upsetting to see where people are showing up in ways that are not in integrity to who they are as a person or showing up in ways that are like false to who they're trying to portray themselves to be that's really uncomfortable to see it makes it almost made me worse with me isolating myself because I definitely isolated myself loads after my kundalini awakening I almost didn't know who I could trust because these were the sort I was seeing this within like people in the spiritual community so that was really really difficult to see because you know you think that you know this person and then you see all this stuff you see beyond what they're showing up as and it's just really overwhelming to see that and I seen that a lot in the spiritual community especially I went to a festival and I seen it so much there and it made me not really want to go back to the festival because I was just like I don't know who's being real and who's not I don't know who's being true and who's not and that is so important to me I think I'm, you know, as a Scorpio anyway, truth and honesty is so important to me because that is who I strive to be. I've almost always been quite observant anyway. And Scorpios are naturally quite good at seeing beyond the bullshit and beyond the surface level of people. But like this has made it even more intense. And you could say it's a blessing and a curse because you're seeing like things that you kind of wish you don't see sometimes because you're seeing uncomfortable and not very nice things in people that you actually really adore and love and it's just I don't know how I feel about that you know so you just have to yeah 
it's a lot it's a lot so the next one is feeling pain others are feeling physically so i've noticed that i've always been able to do this anyway i think just being a reiki healer personally i have been able to feel the pain so if someone's stood in front of me and they're saying feeling loads of pain in this area of my body i suddenly start feeling it in my body it's like i can feel their physical pain and i think that goes back to like my sensitivity levels you know my sensitivity levels are so intense and i'm so much more sensitive to my surroundings and energy that when someone's explaining it to me it's like I can feel them I can feel their aura god knows how big their aura is but like I can feel it in my body and it's happened a lot in the past anyway before I had this kundalini awakening but since the kundalini awakening it's so much more intense and sometimes I can feel the pain before they even tell me and I almost don't tell people this because I don't think that they'll believe me so I tend to keep this to myself because it's something that is just it's I don't know I just think it's weird I think it's weird that I can feel it but I don't always share that with the people that are saying what they're feeling I will just listen to what they're moving through the next thing is twitching and this sounds really weird but honestly ever since I have had my kundalini awakening my twitching is so bad I never used to twitch like this ever And ever since this has happened, I can't help but twitch. And it's especially worse when I am on a substance like mushrooms, cannabis. My twitching is like, oh, it's so annoying, actually. (laughs) I just like, I cannot stop it. And that is one thing that has never left me. It's like the moment it happens. And I twitch when I sleep. I twitch when I'm not sleeping. See, like now when I'm talking to the camera, I don't twitch. It's more so when my body is in a resting state. When my body is still, I will twitch like sometimes and I can't control it it just happens it's like the energy is running from my body and I've noticed something as well so when me and my partner cuddle in bed and you know when you like get really comfy and you know that they're resting and you're resting I almost sometimes feel like this huge urge to just go <laughs> like to just flinch really hard because I just feel like all this energy building up and bubbling in my body it's like because I'm having to stay really still my body doesn't want to stay still and it's like I just want to go <clears throat> If I don't let myself twitch, then I almost feel... Someone's looking at me from outside the window right now. What are you looking at? Huh? Can you see me? Yeah, so I almost feel like I can't move. So I think it makes me want to move even more. My twitches feel like I can't control it by that point. I almost feel like I want to twitch them. Whereas like all my other times of twitching, I don't even think about it. It just happens. So, And my partner says that I twitch a lot when I'm sleeping. So... I feel sorry for him actually because I'm just like I'm so sorry I can't I don't I can't control it so twitching is annoying but it's just one of those things that it is what it is now it's just a part of me now the next one is more isolation so I noticed that I was like choosing to isolate myself a lot more from the world from people from certain places from certain spaces and I think this goes down to again the hyper awareness and the sensitivity to energy and the ability to see beyond the veil of the surface of the person that is showing up in front of me I had an experience last year anyway with someone that made me even more aware that like it's a lot harder to trust people these days and I hate to be a person that finds it hard to trust people but like I just find that so many people have just let me down and so many people have violated my trust and have done stuff to cause me to not trust them I think it's made me a lot more vigilant to the fact that bullshit is everywhere it's not just in one place it's also in the spaces that you might not expect it and I just think that you have to be a lot more aware of who you want to spend your time with and I think that ever since this happened I have definitely isolated myself a lot more my circle got smaller I felt that I was spending more time with my OG, so my original friends, than I was with my spiritual friends, which is really, people might think that's really surprising. I was seeing more falseness in the people that were in the spiritual community than I was seeing in my friends that aren't on the spiritual journey so you know the isolation side of things was more so this like I just need to protect myself I need to protect my energy recalibrate myself and like learn how to calm this energy down before I can like bring myself out into the world again so yeah it was a big it was a big thing and I'm I'm an introvert anyway people don't think that I'm an introvert and I think it's so funny because I am such an introvert but because I'm like confident talking to the camera and I will chat away to you and I can have a really long conversation but I am actually quite shy especially around big groups of people I love spending time at home prefer to be at home than I do out and about around big groups of people and like doing events and things like that like I love going 
going out and doing things, but like I am a proper homebody. I make myself small in big groups because I'm more so like I'll sit back and I'm more observant and I'm more just shy and I hate being a center of attention. I hate speaking in big groups of people. I mean, I can't even imagine standing on stage and speaking in front of loads of people. That is like terrifying to me. People don't realize that, but you know, I actually am quite like that. And people think I'm extroverted just because I'm loud when I'm comfortable. If I'm comfortable around people that I've known for a long time, it's a different story. But if I'm around people that I don't really know, I'm quite like, okay, I'm just going to sit here and observe. So yeah, isolation for me, I actually just really needed it. I really needed it to like process as well what I'd been through because obviously Kundalini awakenings are very big deals and they're not something to take lightly. So yeah, definitely needed that for myself. The fear of people taking advantage of me is the next one. I definitely felt a lot of fear around, you know, whether people were being truthful to me because where I'd seen this veil lifting and seeing the truth of how people are actually showing up I'm seeing people that are like preaching themselves to be this like really beautiful enlightened being yet I'm seeing them talking shit behind people's backs and then being their best friend to their face and that was really uncomfortable for me to see because I'm like are you like how how real are you though like are you really like do you talk about me like that behind my back and then be really nice to my face like there was just so many things that I was just like are people taking advantage of me and are people using me because I am a very generous person I'm very kind I'm very caring I'll do what I can to be there for people I just feel like sometimes you can get taken advantage of especially being like a people pleaser like I've spent most of my life being a people pleaser and people just take advantage of you in so many ways I feel like everyone would understand that's been through that I just felt so much more unsure about who I could trust and I've always been really close friends with my OGs my school friends I've got like a handful of people that I've known since way 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 back and we are all really close still I felt like I could trust them but like the newer more spiritual people in my life it's crazy to think that isn't it but the newer more spiritual people in my life that was where I was struggling I was struggling to to know whether they were showing up authentically and true so that was really uncomfortable actually because I think the thing is with when you have a kundalini awakening it will literally reveal to you all your fears and all the things that you need to work through at like rapid pace so you really find that you have an awareness about something and then you literally will heal it and it will be like this two-week period of recognizing seeing where you can heal it moving through the feelings and the emotions around it and then transmuting it and then coming back to your grounded state coming back to presence as well and then having a pause, having a spiritual pause and having a break. Because it is a lot, you know, when you're realizing these things about yourself, like you're really shifting a lot of energy in your body and like reprogramming your mind, rewiring your neuro pathways in your brain. So it's a lot for your body, you know, it's important that you take that rest. But yeah, like having these deep realizations about all these fears that keep showing up, like that was a big one that kept showing up for me. And then I've recently had my fears that have come up have been like fears of being manipulated. I've been like occasionally moving through it as and when it shows up and then just realizing in the moment is this a fear that is this true to the current situation that we're in now or is this my mind telling me that there's a problem and is that actually the reality because sometimes when our fears come up we can then start reacting physically from like that feeling of when you got manipulated in the past but then when you actually think about the current reality that you're in and the person that you're with the people that you're with or whatever is that actually currently happening right now or is it just your old fear showing up and making you feel that that's the case but it's actually not the reality of the current situation that you're in if that makes sense but that really helped me figure out what was right and what was not you know what was a true feeling and what was just an old fear but it's coming up because it, it wants to be seen it wants to be seen to be healed so just remember that when you have a kundalini awakening like you can't really push things down anymore like you kind of face the shit when it comes up if you face it it will be over with in like two weeks i would say it's usually about a two-week period for me to like recognize and move through it and i definitely have moved through a lot relationally because i was single for five years and then in a relationship learning to relate in a healthy way with a healthy healthy man and actually learning that this man is healthy and wants to support me and wants to love me in all these different ways that I have been so like afraid of being hurt that I've resisted a lot I've resisted it in the past just finding this healthy relational pattern and this healthy you know relationship that I'm in I just I'm just so grateful like I'm, I'm so in love like I'm so in love with him he's such an amazing person I actually feel like teary even saying it he really is helping me break my walls down and showing me that it's safe 
and that I'm okay and I'm safe and I'm loved and I'm cherished and I'm also doing the same for him and it's such a beautiful feeling to just have such an equal exchange and we're both very similar emotionally it's just really beautiful so he's helping me break through my fears in that sense he's helping me learn that like I'm safe and I'm okay and that's not going to happen again and it's just really beautiful and I'm so grateful so the next thing is altered vision so this is really random but this happened at the beginning and it's not happened since I've talked about this again in my first video talking about my full kundalini awakening experience and I talked about how there was one thing that kept happening to me and it was every time I was walking down from tour when I lived in Glastonbury I felt like my feet were on the wrong foot it was like my left foot was on my right leg and my right foot was on my left leg and they were walking like that it felt like I was walking like this but like that oh it was really confusing and very strange and I had to really 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 ground myself and really try to be really clear and present tell myself your feet are on the right foot your feet are on the right foot but I kept feeling this feeling when I was walking down from tour it's so bizarre and I don't know why and I don't know what it means and I don't understand it at all I don't really know what the point of it was but that was what kept happening to me and it hasn't happened since I haven't had that come up again I know people that have had a kundalini awakening experience and experienced this altered vision and these different realities in some ways it's a little bit like psychosis you think that this situation's happening and it's playing out in your mind this way but it's actually not happening that way it's happening a different way but your mind has altered it it's it's very strange so I'm lucky it just happened to my feet <laughs> some people can have really really like intense altered vision and it can actually make them feel like they're going through psychosis so just be careful of that just just remember to come back to like grounding presence come back to your breath be in your space like just look after yourself like touch your body touch your arms just remember you're here and you're in this reality the next one is change of diet so I was vegan for five years I then decided to go vegetarian when I was living in Glastonbury so I started eating eggs and having milk in products not like as a drink and then when I had my kundalini awakening I started eating meat so bizarre so 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 bizarre maybe I could talk about this in a whole separate video but I started eating meat a lot of people People go the opposite way a lot of people go from eating meat to going vegan I don't know I can't explain to you why that happened all I know was that I was craving chicken it was very strange I even was having dreams about eating chicken it was really weird and I resisted it for the longest time and I caved in eventually I was on my period and I just knew that I wasn't getting enough nutrients and protein and all of that kind of stuff in my body and as soon as I started eating meat again I felt a lot more energized I felt a lot better I felt a lot healthier so I think that my veganism for those five years was like a massive huge detox on my body but then I reached a point where my body was like you need this now and it was more so intuitive eating so I'm at a point now in my life where I do eat meat I just don't eat pork I do have fish but it's not my favorite delicacy diet is a big thing I know change of diet is a big thing for people when they go for a kundalini awakening so bear that in mind if you feel like you're starting to crave other things just eat it <laughs> sometimes it's a case that your body actually needs it you know you like I resisted it for so long in my mind I was just thinking like this isn't like I'm craving unhealthy food it was like I was just craving chicken it's just a case of like okay well maybe my body just needs some protein maybe my body needs that density and you just have to go with it do you know what I mean <laughs> please vegans don't come at me listen I was vegan for five years I know what it's like don't come at me okay I don't judge people on what they eat I don't turn my nose up about how people eat even when I was vegan I didn't care if people ate meat that's up to them this is my body this is my choice that's your choice and your body I don't have an issue there I never was a preachy vegan and yeah so the next one is change of routine. I was doing certain things that was like my morning practice, like going for walks and going for meditation and doing a bit of yoga and rah 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 That all changed. I just scrapped all of that. I ended up just focusing on the present moment and living in the moment and getting up when I felt like I wanted to get up if I didn't have work and things like that. So my change of routine just went from like, having a bit of structure to having absolutely no structure at all that worked for a while but I'm noticing more so than anything now that like I need a little bit of structure in my life because otherwise I just can't be productive I can't get things done in the timings that I want to get things done but this might also go back to potentially having ADHD so I don't know I just noticed that my change in routine was different and I was needing other things more than what I needed then but at this point in my life now I'm noticing that I'm gravitating more towards more physical exercise more stretching and things like that because I haven't really been doing as much of that than I was back then I was doing like a lot of walking and I was doing a lot of stretching now it's more so like 
just the gym and then I haven't really been stretching or anything like that but I'm noticing I'm wanting to stretch more now so and move my body and dance more and learn new physical skills as well which I won't talk about just yet so the next one is questioning spiritual beliefs I don't know if I've spoke about this yet but yeah this has been a big one and I think that the questioning of the spiritual beliefs is coming from the things that I've seen in the last year and a half the things that I've witnessed in people that are meant to be on this spiritual journey or are preaching all these things and then I'm seeing this other side of them i think this is where it's coming from and also just knowing that there's a lot of fucking cults out there people learn about you know the mind and how to heal and how to grow and then when you learn about that you recognize what you've seen in yourself and then it's so much easier to recognize that in others because you've seen it in yourself i think that sometimes people take advantage of that and i think sometimes people use that to their advantage to get things from other people and manipulate other people and i think this is where my spiritual beliefs are starting to be a little bit shaken up and also I feel like I'm more so just open to the experience of life and open to all these different viewpoints and ways in the world and ways that people do things and ways to heal. And I just feel more open and curious to everything rather than just being like, this is what I believe in and that's it. I'm happy to learn about every religion, every culture and just be open to the experience and take something from each place. But I just feel like spirituality as a whole is becoming very like, it's becoming a bit like too much i think it's becoming a bit too pushy and a bit too preachy and even myself i feel like i look at content that i share and stuff it's definitely stuff that feels in alignment to me and to my journey in life and what i've experienced but like i just feel like there's so much out there and there's also so much bullshit out there there's so much nuance and jargon and there's so much nonsense as well but there's also so much to learn and so much knowledge to gain I just think it's just getting a bit too overwhelming and everyone's doing it now and I just I just I'm still trying to figure this part out if I'm honest with you I wanted to put it in here because it is what's current for me at the moment it's currently what I'm moving through it's currently what I'm still trying to understand I'm still trying to figure out so eventually in time I will figure this out but at the moment I feel like I'm just being more curious and more open to every kind of space and what could potentially be helpful in every area but I don't want to be this one way fits all and be judgmental to the people that aren't on that journey because I just think that's so egotistical and so close minded and actually just not in alignment to what you're preaching so yeah I think it's important to just be like really open to all different ways all different religions all different spiritual aspects all different new age topics everything just be open be curious and learn what you want to learn from it and just take what you want to take from it so that's kind of where I'm at at the moment but I'll talk about that a little bit more when I kind of figure a bit more out myself because I'm still not sure I'm still a bit like I obviously believe in kundalini because I've experienced myself but then you get people that are doing kundalini awakenings on people that are physically doing these awakenings and I just don't know how I feel about that because I'm like awakenings aren't to be taken lightly you can experience some really fucking difficult shit when you have a kundalini awakening and then people are just activating people because they are paying them to do it but then are are they understanding all the stuff that can happen beyond that? Are they understanding what could happen and the things that can be potentially quite hard and the things that can be really beautiful and the fact that you are literally going to shed your old skin? And like, I just don't know how I feel about it, to be honest. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, <laughs> So I feel like that's all the points that I'm going to touch on today. These are all the physical and the mental things that have happened to me since the last year and a half after my Kundalini awakening. If this has resonated with you, then great. Hopefully you feel like you're not so alone in this experience because you can feel very alone when you move through a Kundalini awakening. It's really hard to like figure out who you can talk to about it. I put it on the internet because I know that I couldn't talk to many people about it. So I went on the internet, I went onto YouTube to find out what other people's experiences were. So I wanted to share mine because it was so helpful hearing others and everyone's so different so whatever I've experienced is going to really resonate with some and might not resonate with others so I just wanted to be a space where people can come to and not feel so alone so hopefully you've experienced that if you have any other ideas for videos related to Kundalini that you want me to potentially film then please leave them down in the comment section below if you have made it to the end of this video please leave a little snake emoji in the comment section that would be amazing and thank you so much for watching don't forget to go and check out the playlist and there's a whole playlist related to Kundalini that I talk on loads of different subjects and open end again go check out the video where I talk about what I realized a year and a half after my Kundalini awakening I will be sharing so many more videos on this topic so please just go and binge it helps you understand yourself a bit better when you go through the awakening especially if you're not sure if you've had one or not 
these will confirm it to you i post every single week so stay tuned for any other videos and my my channel is not just about kundalini it is about just lifestyle in general i do talk about a lot of spirituality other stuff i have got some dreadlock videos really random i'm just a multi-dimensional being really guys and i just don't want to like limit myself to one niche so I, I do share a bit of everything i just share my interests and they change all the time and i do pivot but kundalini is going to be a solid thing that is going to just continuously grow on my channel because it's something i move through and experienced and i have a lot to say and share about it i'll be continuing to add to it over time so yeah um i'm sending you so much love i hope you have a gorgeous day don't forget to like subscribe hit the bell button down below to get notified of when i upload and i'm sending you so much love have a beautiful day or night wherever you are in the world Bye. <laughs> Feel the air coming